because peptin is a peptide that is naturally made within the brain and it's upstream of some of the hypothalamic signals that activate the pituitary for sake of hormone production and reproduction. So I'll just walk you through this pathway. It's actually quite simple. You've got the pituitary, you're now familiar with the pituitary and the pituitary releases two different hormones in both males and females. It releases luteinizing hormone and it releases follicle stimulating hormone. If you watched the episodes that we did about testosterone and estrogen, if you watched the episode that I did on male and female fertility, if you watched the episode that I did with Dr. Michael Eisenberg from Stanford or Dr. Natalie Crawford, who's an OBGYN uh, specializing in fertility, we talked a lot about LH and FSH. Basically, FSH, as the name suggests, stimulates the growth of the follicle, the egg in the female, and it stimulates sperm production in males. Luteinizing hormone stimulates testosterone production from the gonad in males, and it also stimulates estrogen production, and to some extent, testosterone production in females as well. So we need LH and FSH to stimulate the gonads, the ovary or the testes. The hormone that stimulates LH and FSH release is called GNRH, or gonadotropin releasing hormone, and it comes from the hypothalamus. So GNRH is a signal that promotes LH and FSH release. Now that raises the question, what turns on GNRH? And the signal that turns on GNRH is kispeptin. Kispeptin, in other words, is further upstream from GNRH and LSH and FSH. It's a cascade, it goes kispeptin, GNRH, LH, FSH, testosterone, estrogen. Okay, that's the pathway. Now. It's very clear that kispeptin is involved in the activation of puberty, the transition from prepubertal to postpubertal stages of life. It's also involved in any of the sort of downstream effects of having elevated LH and FSH, including elevated vitality, which includes both energy and in some cases, libido. So there's naturally occurring kispeptin and there's now synthetically generated kispeptin designed to mimic naturally occurring kispeptin. And it's actually prescribed for what's called hypothalamic amenorrhea. Hypothalamic amenorrhea is the loss or the absence of periods of menstrual cycles that are the consequence of deficits within the hypothalamus itself. So not something within the ovary or a lack of the pituitary to make LH or FSH, but a deficit of the hypothalamus to promote LH and FSH and the downstream hormones, testosterone and estrogen. Incidentally, there are also kispeptin antagonists, okay? Drugs that are designed to suppress kispeptin and those are used to treat some of the symptoms of menopause, including night sweats and some of the, what are called vasomotor symptoms. So kispeptin is obviously a key player in this whole pathway of steroid hormone release. The steroid hormones being testosterone and estrogen. There are other steroid hormones as well, of course. 